Facebook group. Yeah, we are live. Welcome, Tatiana White. Hello, the Empower Network TV. We're coming live to you with the Midlife Crisis Cure with Tatiana White, who's going to be going into some very fun topics with us today around quantum mechanics, NLP, hypnotherapy. So, Tatiana, welcome here. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Now, why don't we start with what you do? Because we were just talking off camera and the difference the different applications for quantum mechanics versus hypnotherapy, NLP. So why don't you just take that wherever you go and then I'll ask questions as we go, okay? Perfect, perfect. So maybe uh, why should we even uh, care for these techniques, right? So uh, most of us, probably most people who are in your Facebook group are from countries or probably, you know, they're probably business people or somehow achievers or probably somebody who is interested in a little bit more in life than just the job and family. So why, uh, why should we care for the mental hygiene or emotional hygiene or connecting with the soul? And I think everybody in this group has gone through some level of drama, stress, trauma, and stuff like that. And uh, as much as we clean our kitchen every day, hopefully, or clean our bodies every day, hopefully, we never really clean our soul, mind, emotions every day. Even I don't do it every day, right? And it's my <laughs> bread and butter. <laughs> So uh, then obviously most of us uh, are experiencing stress, anxiety, we have a lot of um, wants and needs and uh, we have our ego saying something, our soul saying something and then we basically stuck, like you said, I'm mostly focusing on midlifers. So midlifers normally find themselves stuck in unhealthy situations, right? They might be doing jobs they don't like or maybe they became very successful but it doesn't feed them anymore. Their relationships could be in crisis if they've been with people for years. So, uh, you know, so by the time, time you reach like 35, 40, 45, 50, you're a hot mess normally. <laughs> so uh, the only way to get out of it is actually really to reconnect what with your pure self, right? We don't even need to call it soul. We don't even need to make it spiritual, but we do need to reconnect with our emotional intelligence find what our emotions are, find what our true needs are, because especially women, you know, uh, by the time they reach 40, they have given themselves to the job, to the husband, to the kids, and then who am I? Like, it's not my case. I don't have kids and I'm not married and I, and I don't have a job, so it's not my case. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, you know, like basically that's, that would be the people I'm working with. And uh, so at some point of my life, I went to India after I've done some incredible things um, previously. Basically, I was exploring the world until I was 37. And then when I was 37, I, just, I decided to explore a little bit more the inner world. So I went to India. And because I'm partially Jewish and I like money and I don't like spend money, uh, <laughs> I didn't like the prices of um, the past life regression because I'm very inquisitive, right? Like I'm spiritual, inquisitive. And then all these things were quite expensive. And my Jewish self was like, I hope I'm not like offending any Jews here. I was like, uh, I was like, how am I going to do that? You know, I really want to experience it, but I don't want to pay the money. So I basically took all the courses at the universities, which was obviously much more expensive, but it was also much more deeper. And then I realized it's definitely my soul's calling. So that's how I came, came across hypnotherapy, basically going to uh, India, doing my um, ashram time, my yoga time and reconnecting. And um, and I did it for a little while. Uh, I was running yoga retreats and hypnotherapy retreats, and I was uh, guiding like groups and uh, individuals, and it was fun. But I seem to go through like phases where I become really good at something. I'm like, okay, what's next? Uh, and this time it was more about not leaving the topic, but expand on that topic. So NLP came along, but I found NLP pretty much similar to hypnosis. It's just like different wordings. Although doing a lot of marketing these days, I'm seeing how much NLP resonates with keywords and people. But honestly, it's more or less the same, just um, less of the eyes closed. <laughs> but then I absolutely uh, fell in love with quantum healing because... Um, 
all the soul aligning we do when we connecting to the collective consciousness or the people's subconsciousness um it takes a while you know you need at least an hour ideally two hours to do that and it's also not exactly cheap and then i realized that um and also at the beginning um it was quite dark for me in a sense of you going through people issues later on i figured i want to turn it because i'm not interested in people's issues i'm more about like um giving likes to people or making them happy or making them joyful and i'm sure it's actually possible without um reconnecting to the drama or trauma so then this quantum healing came to the game and i realized um it was the total game changer for me for my personal life you know i didn't have to be so introspective when i did like self-hypnosis and i didn't have to go so deep into people's stories and uh and actually quantum healing is honestly a little bit more of an nlp nlp is basically about rewiring the brain and quantum uh, and quantum healing uh does exactly the same rewiring your emotions rewiring your brain teaching you how to uh turn your thoughts into things uh teaching you how to change your bad health into good health basically through changing mindset being creative um having inspiration having fun and i believe that's the whole point why we're here having fun being joyful <laughs> i got a question you said when you started you said emotional hygiene mental hygiene can you i love what you're talking about can you go unpack that a little bit more why do we need because we all know we have to shower tatiana right good things happen when we shower when we don't bad things happen so what is the importance of that what does that practically look like do we have like five hours <laughs> 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 all right well i'll be i will take just a very very simple uh simple things i'll even ask you right Let, let's do it actually interactive uh does it ever happen to you uh that you feel stressed or you you feel some kind of anxiety or worry yeah last night i woke up at 2 a.m because of the what's going on in the group and then we're rolling out the academy behind the scenes and from 2 a.m to 3 a.m i could not sleep i was allowing myself to start worrying and i was i was struggling with thoughts and then i was laying there going why am i what am i what do i need to learn in this process because there's something that is trying to speak to me and i was like what is that what do i need to and um, now a lot do you think perfect that's that's awesome and do you think two o'clock in the morning is the time to do that to do the introspection or is it time to actually go and sleep <laughs> i was wanting to sleep but i was like i was woken up so i'm like okay i need to somehow make peace with something because i was either i was recognizing i was in dissonance either like i was worrying about something because i was hanging on to limiting beliefs or fear so i knew something had to be done but i wasn't sure what to do exactly so you just named it right so right now i'm in a caribbean island and it's incredibly hot like i'm actually sweating i'm like super super hot right now all right and if i don't go shower tonight i probably won't sleep well i will probably wake up in the middle of the night feeling sticky disgusting horrible right and that's what i'm talking about waking up in the middle of the night means that we don't do the work during the day and um and that's what mental hygiene is emotional hygiene is we all know um even as a child you know we already when we born we already know this feels good this feels bad right i actually i should know but i'm terrible with numbers uh so the real hypnotherapist in this group please forgive me but there is an age i believe it's like six or nine when you finally start to have your own perception your own self your, your own ego let's call it right you know longer absorbing the outside but you already like expressing yourself in the outer world and by then you already know uh i like this i don't like this uh this makes me feel like that this makes me feel like that so it's basically <clears throat> understanding a lot of principles uh but let's put it simply as soon as we don't feel good during the day for whatever reason and especially you and i we in the age uh, we know this is gonna keep us up in the night we know if i'm not gonna go through it now during the day it's definitely gonna come at me so you know it's good to basically acknowledge like uh right now i have this issue it makes me feel exactly this and then you know and then it's like many other things you can do with it like first is it worth worrying yes or no if no learn how to let go as soon as the thoughts come to you let it go 
if it's important to worry about, let's say your child is really sick and it's not looking really good, then it's probably really good to worry about it. But then again, you can choose instead of worrying, focusing on love, focusing on health, focusing on uh, trusting that everything's gonna be okay, trusting the process. And like I said, there's so many different um, options how to, how to deal with the situations during the day. So then when you come to bed, you're at peace with your day. And honestly, we are still human. And obviously we're not robots. And just because you did your mental hygiene during the day, doesn't mean you're not gonna sweat uh, in the night. But then as soon as it happens in the night, you already have all these techniques. So for example, when I wake up in the middle of the night with some kind of worry, anxiety, something doesn't resonate with me, I basically say to my anxiety, hey, I really need to sleep now. <laughs> Let's speak about it in the morning. <laughs> and it works, you know, uh, because I am already, I already know that uh, I can either be one hour up solving nothing and next day being like not happy, or I just speak to my anxiety, hey, time to move on and uh, let's focus next day. And I have so many beautiful stories I could tell you right now, like incredibly beautiful stories. Um, I don't know, do we have time for one story? Yes, please tell a story or two. Yes. <laughs> That's actually a really nice story. About three years ago, I was working on my uh, money mindset because I'm doing really well and I'm growing in my life financially and everything's just fine because I work super, super hard. I'm like, you know, I'm probably one of the top 20% <laughs> of the people of just, who just madly work, 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 achieve, 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 but also soulfully, not just to, you know, run myself down. And I still felt like there is a money mindset issue, some kind of limitation. I was uh, doing fine, but I wasn't doing exceptionally for the amount of work, uh, for the amount of like interest, feeling like it's my purpose. I was like, I should be like completely blowing. So then I did some meditation on that. Then somebody offered me sound healing. So I told them if he can put like the intention into that. So basically I did like three or four. Uh, in intentions uh, during three or four different activities that I would like to figure out my money mindset issue, like what is holding me back from, um, yeah, not being like, I'm going to call it boldly rich, right? <laughs> and then I had this dream, which is why I'm actually speaking about it. And then I had this horrible dream. It was a, It was actually not a dream. It's one of those situations, you know, it's not a dream. It was horrible. It was from medieval. And I was like an executor, you know, the person that kills others uh, on order. I was a horrible looking, sad looking man. I didn't have any joy from killing others. And everybody was just as poor, as horrible as I am. And poverty everywhere, blood. It was hopeless, hopeless, horrible, horrible dream where the aristocracy or whoever we had no we had no um value you were completely valueless and uh it was just incredibly bad dream and it was like at the beginning of the night maybe like a midnight so I woke up and I was like wow that was full on you know but I knew I wanted to sleep I knew I don't want to think about it now so I was like no 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 I spoke to my anxiety or I spoke to my feelings like no let's sleep if you're still there in the morning I'm gonna think about you and surprisingly, the dream, when I woke up in the morning, it was just as strong as in the midnight. And you know how dreams uh, go away, right? But no, it was like full on. So instead of hiding from that dream, uh, which most people probably would pre pretend it's not happening, you know, or have a shot to <laughs> flush it away. <laughs> Uh, and it was really not a nice feeling, especially being part of it, you know, killing others with no joy. So I was like, okay, well, let's close my eyes and uh, let's meditate on it. Let's have a little bit of channeling or self-talk about what's happening. And basically, that's what I figured. It was basically either part of my past lives, that there are past lives, or I was connected to something in the collective consciousness. But whatever it was, it has happened to me or to somebody else. And some part of me was still attached to it, you know, that kind of incredible poverty. So then I said, okay, thanks for showing me that. It was really like really cool story or, you know, good, good movie to see. It's a, it's a shame it's happened, but it's probably good for something. And I let go. And no joking, the next day, uh, a friend of mine, um, I should actually also say that during the sound healing, which happened the night before or two days before, 
Uh, I also saw these angels throwing like um, golden dust at me saying, hey, take as much as you want. We have so much. You just don't ask. You just need to ask. Just ask for it. And then the night or two nights after I had this terrible dream and the morning after that or two mornings after that, uh, a friend of mine who I didn't really knew that much, like I met him twice, he said, hey, I have $25,000 that I would like to help you with your business. Where do I send it? So, um, you know, basically mental hygiene is about, uh, you know, indulging in our worries, indulging in our anxiety, indulging into the bad emotions because it's nothing but a compass on our way on how to be worry free or <laughs> bad, emotion, bad emotions free and stuff like that. So how, Tatiana, that's fascinating. How did you learn this, your story? Where did your journey begin that you now are at this place of mastering and knowing these things? What pain did you have to come through to get to this place? Well, that would be another five-hour story, but again, I'm going to make it short. <laughs> All right, very quickly. Uh, when I was a very little child, I was still in the, in the pram, in the push chair, whatever you call it in English. And I could, I was a baby, I was a baby, total baby. And I had a, like a little moment of consciousness, like a few seconds of like a adult person consciousness. Um, and I saw my mom, she was, you know, a little overweight. She was after uh, giving me birth and she was after bus accident. Anyway, she didn't, as bad as it sounds, she didn't look gracious at all. And she was like puffing and huffing, pushing the chair up the hill. She didn't look good horrible and I felt so bad and I felt responsible for her and I felt responsible I was like it should be me who's helping her not her looking like this helping me and then it was gone right and then there was just the two seconds of consciousness and gone then another moment my first steps when I when I took like maybe it was the first time I took first steps I don't know um my first thought like proper thought not just like a emerging consciousness was hmm what if I'm not real and everything else is real I was like oh what if I am real and nothing else is real <laughs> so so I guess we all are born with some talents or with some uh, some level of consciousness or or openness I guess and like I said until 29 years I was more uh following the the dogmas the the indoctrination, the system, uh, these things. I'm from communist, post-communist country as well. So, you know, there was even more rules and no spirituality, no religion, not, nothing like that. So until I was 29, I was basically building career and stuff like that. And then when I was 29, I decided to change my life. Um, uh, and since I changed my life and started to follow my dreams, it just all started to grow. And um it's just building on, building on. And like I said, there is a beautiful story about my life, but I don't think uh, we don't have time for it. And it would be shame to cut, to cut it. It was like a beautiful life story. Uh, definitely inspirational for those who need a kick um, to change their lives. <laughs> and yeah, and you know, and basically what I'm trying to achieve with my business is to teach people how to be independent of everything, independent of therapists, independent of people like me, independent of consultants, coaches, basically 100% independent. Like, I feel very independent when it comes to my emotions. Of course, occasionally, like everyone, uh, I get a little upset and I do appreciate, you know, like a holding hand. But uh, gen generally speaking, my mission is basically help people to connect to themselves, to the higher consciousness. Some people call it God, some people call it source, some people call it uh, Hicks, uh, Hicks field, you know? So whatever it is, basically connecting people so they can overcome obstacles and do the hygiene. <laughs> That's beautiful. Do the hygiene, do let's all do the hygiene. So Tatiana, how would you like people to connect with you? I'll be tagging you in this interview. Do you have a website, Facebook group you wanna drop? What do you wanna drop? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Like I said, uh, I am actually literally in the middle of like taking my business to completely uh, different sites and everything. Uh, so I think the only way from uh, would be either Facebook or email, I think old fashioned email at this point. <laughs> Sure. I'll be tagging you in this post. So people, cause you're in the group, people will be able to click on your bio. Are they free to reach out and friend you or send you a message if they're, if they want to connect? 
Absolutely. I will give you, I will give you my Facebook information. I will give you my email information. And, um, and apparently today I would like to finish my new web page. So quite possibly I will be even able to give you the website. Well, please feel free to come in after the interview and, and drop those in the comments. Absolutely. Drop any links you want. This is your interview in the comments. That's absolutely uh, appreciated and, and appropriate. I just want to say it's really amazing to meet you have a you have a big drive and you have a big why and you clearly are living what you're teaching and i love how you said you want to teach people how to get free so they don't need to be on the bottle the rest of their life they can actually be independent and i love that is your mission that is liberating so actually i came up with the with the name for the next level of my business and it's gonna be it is already freedom freedom and freedom, basically for the freedom and Frida will be an avatar for people, you know, something to aspire to instead of like uh, trying to be like me or trying to be like Tony Robbins, they will actually create their own Frida avatar and that's the, what they're going to be aspiring to. So that's all about the freedom and independence. <laughs> I love that. I love that a lot of people in here are going to jive with what you're saying. Tatiana, so thank you for being on the Empower Network TV today. I um, This was a pleasant surprise. So I'll be tagging you in these, sending you the links after. And uh, if you've been watching the Empower, Empower Network TV, you've been listening to Tatiana White uh, teach us about spiritual or emotional, mental, physical, all that hygiene and the importance of it. So let's wash ourselves, people. Let's get to our highest self that we were sent here to live. So thank you so much for your message. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate okay. it. Chat soon.